morticians of Reddit, what is the most bizarre slash uncomfortable slash creepy etc. case or situation you've had to deal with? Dad was a coroner, if I recall correctly, before switching to doctor. I can never remember the details correctly for the medical stuff but pretty much the body getting examined was a former birthday clown. There weren't any external wounds, so he figured the cause of death was internal. The guy had gastroparesis which to my dad meant. Cool, stomach contents should be in good shape. His team opens the dude up and sees this flurry of F. There's partially digested birthday cake, that edible confetti stuff, effing streamers, and about a dozen pills of Xanax next to all of it. Dad sifts through the stomach some more and sees what looks like a sponge of some kind. He pulls one out and it's a effing sponge Dino that comes in those capsules you drop in water. He finds more, about a small biome's worth. He thought he was getting effing pranked. The story pieces together, as the clown decided to end it with the Xanax and booze, he gets a store-bought cake and eats it with everything on it, then chases down some Dino sponges just for the hell of it. Heard on the news a friend from my youth had been killed. I was terribly sad for him, he never could escape his demons and it led him down some terrible paths. Came into work a few nights later and there he was, face completely bashed in by a rock. This wasn't the first time someone I knew ended up in our morgue, but certainly the saddest. I worked my cousin's fatality wreck. I was first on scene and didn't even recognize him. It took all I had to make, the knock, and tell my aunt and uncle, but I felt like I was the one that had to do it. My ex-in-laws were in the death business. They told me a story once about the county attorney whose wife passed away. The family was very wealthy and she had a mouth full of gold fillings. The attorney demanded that my in-laws retrieve the gold from her mouth. This required using a dental drill to drill down her teeth and dig out the gold. My ex-father-in-law complied with the attorney's wishes but was physically ill about having to do such a needless step to this lady. I was a student at the time, but my first ever bloater was brought in, and once we popped him, insides were outsides and everywhere. Would not recommend. On my first night shift I thought staff were effing with me, because I kept hearing what sounded like breathing. Fresh body brought in and was releasing gas. I'd never dealt with anyone dying in the hour being brought in, so it was scary hearing this body breathing. I've been there when family members have passed and witnessed breathing and limbs moving, so I know it's normal but as a student, the staff like to F with you. Bizarre one was piecing a guy back together after he committed suicide by gunshot to the face. Family wanted an open casket. Had to try our best, then ask one family member in to see if they still wanted open casket, because we just didn't feel like it was right. Dad come in, sees that no matter how we tried we couldn't make him look the same as before, and agrees that family shouldn't see him this way. The day we delivered him to the funeral parlor, family changes their mind and has open casket anyway. Found out rest of family didn't know he shot himself in the face. We ended up getting a letter of complaint from other members of the family for the open casket. I finished as a student a few days after, but would still love to be in that career though. I had never been in the room with death until my infant daughter passed away last weekend. Congenital brain issue, expected death at home. She died quite suddenly, and I'd always heard that bodies can move and breathe after death. I was holding her, she had stopped breathing, and she had no heartbeat, we had a stethoscope handy because she was on a feeding tube and we had to check placement. Suddenly she started gasping. She started doing agonal breathing, a completely last ditch brain stem reflex to revive herself. I thought it was just gas at first. Then she kept doing it. After about 5 minutes of being dead and blue and without breathing or heartbeat, she brought herself back completely. Pinked right up, normal heart rate. It was the most incredible and shocking and awful thing I've ever seen in my life. I wish someone had warned me this was possible. When the hospice nurse got there she said that dying infants often practice death and die several times. Our daughter incurred some brain damage from this, not that it was an issue in our case. She ended up dying and reviving herself with agonal breathing one more time before she finally passed. The process took 8 hours. Now that I have seen someone die and come back, I fully understand why people created zombie mythology and otherwise invented paranormal explanations for these things. I saw this with my own eyes and still don't believe it. I work with the dead, procure eyes and corneas for transplant. While I was working on one guy at the medical examiner's office, they brought in another guy, 
whose cats had eaten his face clean. Just his face, nothing else. It was a sort of decaying, but still somewhat normal looking, dude, with a bright, Halloween looking skull picked clean. Lots of murder victims, gunshots, car accidents, even one train accident. A guy who hanged himself in front of his kids with a dog leash, which was still in the bag with his body. High caliber self-inflicted gunshot wound to the face, with teeth and jaw and bits everywhere and a bunch of gauze stuffed into the remaining hole. Let's not forget the guy in the decomp room who was just a pile of bones, hair, and leathery tissue paired with a bucket of goo. Crazy stuff. But never a dull day. Not a mortician, this comes from my mother back when she was a teenager. Guy she knows takes a job with the local funeral home. He works the graveyard shift, all was well for the first few months. Dude is often weirded out at work, claims that the building is haunted. Earlier in the evening, they get a call from the hospital saying that they have a lady there ready for pickup. They pick her up, guy is freaking out, says he has a bad feeling. Later in the evening, mortician has to step out for a bit, leaving guy there alone with the dead lady. He goes about his work, still a little freaked out. Suddenly he hears this low, soft moan. He swears it is just his mind playing tricks on him, goes about his business. He hears it again, little louder than last time, it is late, he is alone, he is just hearing things. Probably just the pipe settling, the plumbing is old after all. Short time passes and it is louder, at this point he is sure he isn't just imaging things. He knows he heard the dead lady moan. His first though was the mortician was messing with him. He has been shaken all evening and this a-hole is pranking him. He marches over. Very funny you idiot. Yanks back the sheet covering the dead lady expecting to find the mortician somewhere around her. Dead lady grabs the guy's wrist. He lets out this scream and bolts for the door. Forgets his car, runs all the way home. Turns out, old lady wasn't dead, hospital got it wrong, hooray 1950s medicine. She had been in a coma or something and they had been sure she had passed on earlier that morning. She woke up at the funeral home and scared the ever-loving hell out of the assistant. He quit the next day, said he would never set foot there ever again. A writing professor of mine used to work in small-town journalism, and decided to interview some folks from the local retirement home to get a close-up view of his town's history. One of his interviews was an ancient, retired mortician who told him a rather interesting story. Shortly before 1920, two teens were going to a school dance in a blizzard. The carriage they had taken got stranded and the boy went for help. The girl unfortunately, froze to death in the carriage, in an upright, seated position. Apparently, the mortician had to sit her in a rocking chair in front of the fire to thaw her out before he could go about his usual business. Mom was a mortician. Of the stories she's told me, creepiest would either be the guy that had his face eaten off by wild boars while hunting, guess he wasn't that good at it, or the guy that fell into a wood chipper. Funny, poor word choice, thing was, I was at a breakfast a few days later where fellow high schoolers were trying to gross out the girls at the table, and when they pointed out that I wasn't really bothered by it, I kept chewing and said. Yeah, my mom got that guy. Said it was effing gross. Everyone goes silent. I stopped chewing and looked up to everyone looking pale. Shrugged. Oh, y'all forgot she's a mortician didn't you? And kept eating. Uncomfortable for her was one that was also kind of sad. This woman was morbidly obese. Like, when they somehow all got her on the gurney at her home, when they were pushing it out the wheels were pushing indentions down into the wood floors. Now, this woman is what some bullies would call, a whale. I wouldn't, but we all know a-holes. Well, apparently this woman loved the hell out of some blue whales. Family kept going on and on about it. So the time comes for them to bring the clothes for her wake, they bring a big blue moo moo and a gaudy blue whale brooch. Then they hand her the CD to play. Usually it's church hymns or sad country songs etc. No one listens to it before, because why would you? So the service starts. Mom pops the CD in, boop god darn blue whale calls fill the funeral home. My mom was very professional with her job, but every funeral director had to excuse themselves to compose themselves. LMAO please tell me this isn't true. It was a respectful thing, according to my mom. This woman really loved whales, and her family definitely paid tribute to it however they could. Sorry for crap formatting, on phone. 
Not me, but my best friend works in the death business. So, since she doesn't have a Reddit account I'm going to steal her karma because this is my favorite story. She tells me all sorts of lovely things about her job and the recovery she has done, but my favorite involves a gurney and some stairs. To set the scene, a family called in that their mother had passed in her apartment. Third story, narrow halls and no elevators. Anyways, she goes to pick up the body to take back to the funeral home with an assistant. So they get up there and lift this woman who is close to 300 ibs onto the gurney and begin their journey down to the van. Mind you, the whole family was there and pretty much in hysterics and crowd around as they make their way to the stairs. With family watching, they make it about halfway down the first flight of stairs when the body starts to slide. There's no way to reposition, so my friend who is at the foot of the gurney is now about butt level to the freshly deceased. So trying to make the best of the situation they continue their way down and try not to shift the body anymore. The thing about dead bodies is, that gas starts to exit pretty quickly and I'm sure you know where my story is going. The body started letting out farts, straight into my friend's face. PFFFFT, PFFT, PFFT, PFFT with every step down they take, and this poor girl has to keep a straight face, while getting crop dusted by a dead lady with her whole family watching. Story from a friend of a friend. She, the mortician, met some guy at the bar. They hit it off and she gave him her number. Within a couple of days she finds out that the guy died in a car accident, because his body ended up at her place of work. Before the funeral service she received several calls from an unknown number, and whenever she picked up there was no response. Eventually, she got the eerie hunch that it may be him, and proceeded to address him by name. Tells him to pass in peace and to stop calling. It worked. Uncomfortable? Being trapped in the morgue alone during a hurricane, our morgue was basically in a basement type situation and the hospital was near a main waterway that flooded. I had to move all the bodies to the highest cabinets, pray the generators would keep everyone cold, and was standing on my desk for about two hours when someone finally came for me. Bizarre would be, drowned guy who was DOA, and once locked up in the cabinet a tapping noise started coming from him. It was a crab that had made itself at home inside him, and when it got cold he wanted out. Creepy was, when we got some people who were doing bath salts and had eaten other people. They looked crazy even in death. A friend of my husband does organ recovery and has told us many, many stories about the weird stuff that happens to dead bodies. He was working with a new guy on his first night on the job, and the body they were working on moaned and sat up. The new guy passed out, so my friend just propped him up in a corner and went back to harvesting corneas. I don't want to know what it takes to get used to that kind of thing. Most bizarre. Particularly difficult family. None of them could agree at all on what to do with their dad. One faction wanted burial, the other was demanding cremation. After much shouting they finally agreed on a compromise. They wanted us to cut their father's body in half. That way one half could be cremated and the other half buried. I had to explain to the unfortunate arranger, who at this point looked beyond exhausted, that no, we could not saw a human body in half because that would be very illegal and very messy. Not me, but my dad and his friend, the mortician, Mr. Mort. My dad was doing some business on the other side of the state, pretty close to where his friend Mr. Mort lived. Mr. Mort invited him for a coffee, but said, Hey, while you're here, can you help me with a particularly heavy one? Meaning a large body needed to be cremated. My dad was in prime shape and said sure. There was a 350 to 400 pound, 25 to 28 stone, lady that needed to be moved from a gurney to the conveyor belt contraption, to be rolled into the crematorium furnace. Normally, she'd be placed into some kind of cardboard coffin, but she was simply too large, so had to go in wearing a hospital gown. After some planning and effort, they successfully moved her over to the belt without dropping her, pushed her into the furnace, and turned it on. The crematorium was nearly automated. Basically, push a button, and it went through everything it needed to do to properly turn whatever was inside to ash. So my dad and Mr. Mort said it, and walked down the street for a coffee. About 20 minutes later, they see a fire truck go by and think nothing of it. Then another one goes by. This was a small town in western South Dakota, so there weren't many fire trucks. They walked outside, and there were flames coming from the crematorium, and some oil was coming from the building. And the smell of burnt ham. What happened? 
The lady was so large, that there wasn't enough space around her body in the furnace to generate the heat necessary to properly turn her to ash. But there was enough heat to melt her skin, and turn her fat reserves into hot oil, and leak out of the crematorium. The oil set the building on fire, thankfully it was in a separated garage, so the entire mortuary didn't go up in flames, and flaming oil started to flow down the driveway and down the street. The first fire engine was parked too close to the fire, and the hot oil flowed past the tires on one corner, then melted and popped them. So you had a bit of pandemonium of firefighters spraying the flames, and others jumping into the two fire trucks to move them away ASAP. My dad is a mortician. We had actually lived above the funeral and my life had been just like my girl, he has been a mortician for over 40 years and has tons of stories. The worst by far is the human soup guy. Apparently, this elderly gentleman passed away while having a bath, with the water still running. He was living alone in the house with very little family. I don't remember how long he was in the bath before someone found him. My dad goes to pick up the body and it's human soup. The hot water constantly running and the amount of time causes his body to turn to mush. He said the smell was the worst he ever smelt. He got back to the office later that day and his boss told him to throw away his suit and he'd buy him another. I worked as an autopsy lab assistant at a local medical examiner's office, on the night shift. This usually meant, I was working alone at night between two freezers stocked with the various bits and remains of individuals, unless a doctor needed to do a late night autopsy for religious purposes, or an investigator or police officer needed to fingerprint a body. We only got those whose cause of death needed to be verified, and usually meant we got the interesting cases. Interesting job, so ask away. The ones that really annoyed or bothered me after a while, annoyance is a part of the detachment and making it just a part of the job, on my end. I'm seeing up to 100 fresh corpses a week. Were the individuals that were extremely obese, talking 500 pounds or so. The one that sticks out, is a woman that was 510 pounds and was hit by a car and ejected at high speeds, and then hit by an 18-wheeler. Now imagine 500 pounds of hamburger helper with large bits of organ, and bone mixed in, with a few chunks of leg, and that was a fun bag to try to prep an x-ray for autopsy. Having to pull parts of a dude out of a bucket and piece him together like some macabre jigsaw puzzle, was a very interesting second day as well. A suicide via crossbow was pretty cool, as you really don't see that every day. The most interesting, that I can share, was a murder via katana. We were all super interested to see what that looked like, and it turns out it was one perfect stroke between the ribs into the heart. No bones were hit, just the heart. We joked about a master ninja hunting the city for weeks after. There are much more crazy ones, but it would be way too easy to identify my area from them, and families don't need that head and heartache from re its long reach. The worst is always decomposing bodies and water finds. It is the worst smell of the bunch by far, and the spongy, soupy, texture bodies get, from long times in an aquatic environment is the absolute worst. They tend to burst everywhere when you cut them open too. It was a sad job most of the time, as we only got those that suffered a violent death that needed investigated. Lots of children and people that were clearly failed by society. I had a friend who was dating a guy who worked in a morgue. One day, she finds pictures that he had hidden, which showed him having sex with different dead bodies. It's horrifying to think that someone can do this, but it's personally horrifying to think of someone raping my dead body. It's become a personal phobia.